Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Tucker Tonight. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And unless you know differently, I'm going to be filling in for Tucker for the entire hour. Meanwhile, more and more Democrats are taking turns sticking a knife in the fallen Clinton dynasty, so to speak. As a wave of sexual harassment scandals engulfs Washington today, even top liberals are taking their turns putting a knife in Bill and Hillary Clinton for their handling of the former president's sex scandals. Here, for example, is what former HHS Secretary Kathleen Sebelius said to David Axelrod on his podcast. Everyone in politics knew about his behavior and and we look the other way and I think there's a lot of soul searching to be done. You bet. And that shouldn't happen ever again. Um, not only did people look the other way, but they went after the women who came forward and accused him. Was that fair criticism of Hillary that she participated in that effort? Absolutely. I think it's it's very fair. Now's the courage Linda Tripp was at the center of the Monica Lewinsky scandal two decades ago. She says these new attacks on the Clintons are disingenuous political posturing. Tripp told the Weekly Standard this, it's a dollar late, and uh, actually the phrase is, it's a day late and a dollar short. Joining us right now, a guy that never messes up a phrase, Mark Stein. He's author and columnist and wonderful person. Uh, Mark, <laughs> no, this is no revelation. This is the, a political opportunity for those on the left to suddenly stand up and act as if that they're, they're above it all. Where were they right. when it was really took courage to stand up to the Clinton dynasty? Yeah, they, they basically doing it for political reasons. I mean, basically, this is the Clinton's uh, Ceausescu moment. Uh, the, the apparatchiks underneath them have decided it's time to shuffle them off the rooftop into the helicopter, uh, put them up against the wall and then stick a couple of bullets in them. That's, that's the moment they're facing. But the fact is that both Democrats and the media actually celebrated Clinton's behavior uh, in the 1990s. It wasn't just uh, that they trashed all those women. Uh, and it wasn't just that Gloria Steinem and other feminists, uh, Gloria Steinem wrote the one free, famous One Free Grope uh, column for the New York Times in which she said that the system worked. Bill Clinton had made an improper suggestion to Paula Jones and actually dropped his trousers, but that he took no for an answer. And so, as Gloria Steinem saw it, he, the system uh, had, in fact, worked. But it went beyond that in that a whole bunch of so-called liberal progressives celebrated Clinton's behavior. All uh, kinds of famous feminists like uh, Katie Royfe and uh, Nancy Friday and Erica Jong all uh, said how pleased they were uh, to have a man who, unlike those uptight Republicans, right. wasn't so sexually insecure that he needed to fire off rockets at every third world country on earth. They thought Clinton was sexy and they thought his appetite made him sexy rather than a predator. It's been an extraordinary shift uh, across two decades in their thinking about that. It's guy. amazing the way you can remember 1996 and 98. This is coming back to me as you say it. But do you also right. fault the American people in the Times? Because President Clinton left with a 60 percent approval rating. They said the Republicans overstepped. Newt Gingrich had cost him his speakership. A lot of people who went after him looked so aggressive that it ended up boomeranging on Republicans. So the American people had a different mindset, too. Is that fair, Mark? Well, no, I think a lot of the American people just didn't want to hear about it. They didn't want to... I mean, there were a lot of phrases in the air that I, I uh, think carefully about bringing up. I and uh, and people didn't what actually want to... What the meaning of is, to... is, and what, type, yes. what is, is, and we don't want to fill in the gaps necessarily there, but that permeated no. through the, the primary school system. That's, that's right. And I think a lot of people just actually wanted to put their hands over their ears and say, no, nah, no, nah, I can't hear you. And I think the Democrats, in that sense, the lesson learned was that if you brazen it out, you will succeed. And that, that brazening had consequences all the way to last year's election. Right. Because the only reason Hillary Clinton was a presidential candidate is because of the deal she did with Bill Clinton in 1998 and 1999, that if she didn't do what most self-respecting women would do and walk out on that guy, uh, that uh, there would be a reward for her in the shape of a Senate seat in a state she'd never lived in, which led to her becoming Secretary of State, which led to her becoming presidential nominee. But the, the fact of the matter is that feminists threw away 40 years of hard work 
uh, by standing by Bill Clinton. There was the, the right. famous Nina Burley line in that she'd gladly perform various services uh, on him in exchange for keeping abortion legal. In other words, to the liberal progressives, 20 years ago, the end justified the pants dropping. And you can't blame Harvey right. Weinstein and Al Franken right. and all the other guys for learning the lesson of that. Right. I think it's ends justifies the means, but the pounce, I see the insertion there. So, Mark, yeah, let, no, let, I, I got let, that phrase wrong, just like you did at the top of the hour. All right. Brian. Listen, you don't have to keep bringing up my mistakes. It's pro I'm not probably not going to make <laughs> another one until at least 2020. Mark, so okay. let, let's game plan this out. Hillary Clinton's not going anywhere. And Philip Reigns, huh. uh, uh, the longtime aide, went back at Kristen Gillibrand, the senator who really looked at Hillary Clinton as a mentor. She took Hillary Clinton's seat. When she called out Hillary Clinton, Philip Reigns went back. So, uh, so the Clinton camp went back at those attacking her. Are we going to see a democratic civil war? And then who will be left standing at the end? Well, it's not going to be the Clintons. I mean, you know, basically, I said it was the Ceausescu moment. If they're not actually going to be put up against the wall, it's something closer to, like, Robert Mugabe in Zimbabwe. There's, a, like, a little period of uncertainty. But basically, people are figuring out that the future does not lie with these two people. Uh, when you had the big 25th anniversary party uh, just last week, uh, the, the fact of the matter is that that's the only relevance that Bill Clinton has to today's politics is the fact uh, that there is uh, that suddenly sexual harassment has actually become a burning topic in Washington and in yep. Hollywood and even at PBS. And the, and, the fact of the, and the fact of the matter is that he, he got away with it because right. he was brazen. Most people would have slunk out of public life in shame. And if you're wondering why Charlie Rose is walking around naked, right. when you have a president in the Oval Office who uh, is a serial predator, why shouldn't some schlub of a host at PBS right. think he can get away with it too? Wow, that's a huge leap because Bill Clinton, uh, because Bill Clinton had his transgressions. Charlie Rose dropped his pants. That's who I'm going to leave Mark Stein with on the Friday edition of uh, Tucker Tonight. Mark, uh, either you were very quiet during Thanksgiving, and this is you opening up your spleen for us, or everyone was eviscerated at your table at the Stein no. House on Thanksgiving. No, no, sorry, sorry. I'm a, uh, I'm a fortnight late and a farthing short, Brian. I All think right. that's the phrase you were looking for. All right. Hey, uh, uh, enough phrases for today, Mark Stein. Uh, for the power vested in me, you can go about your weekend now. Thank you. Thank you.